Good morning, I'm Anne Marie Tiernan joining you live along with Bob Siegel. We are in Delphi in Carroll County where for the first time today we were able to see the suspect in the Delphi murder case, Richard Allen, head into court. There were a couple key issues that he was arguing and uh, Bob, tell us a little bit about the scene today and what you believe was the biggest news. Well, the, the scene started, it was a packed courtroom today, just about every seat. They left the front row of seats open, but otherwise every other seat was filled in that courtroom. And we got to see Richard Allen walk into the court today. He is the defendant uh, right now, the only defendant named in the Delphi murders. And he walked in in a yellow prison jumpsuit, both his hands and his ankles in chains. He was accompanied by his attorneys. To me, the biggest moment that came out during this uh, hearing today, which was about whether to release public records, was a statement that was made by the prosecutor. And we've heard before kind of uh, allusions to the fact that investigators think that there might be someone else who might have been involved in the killings. And, you know, we heard uh, at the press conference a few weeks ago, they said this is still a very ongoing investigation to see if there's anyone else involved. Today, the prosecutor told the judge in trying to argue why the case and the, the records should remain sealed. He said, we believe Richard Allen is not the only actor involved in this. To date, that is the most direct statement so far by investigators, their prosecutor, that they believe that these murders were not committed by one single person. So two big issues coming into the courtroom today. One is the probable cause affidavit. Is Are those records going to be released? And was he granted bail? He, he He's being held without bail, uh, saying that the case was flimsy against him. What were the decisions on that? Well, first, we'll deal with the bail issue. Uh, it was just a, a request late in the day yesterday by Richard Allen's attorneys uh, to, to grant bail and to ask the judge to have a bail hearing. That's actually now going to take place in February. The judge said that she will hear that. She wanted to leave plenty of time and the court's dockets, the, the judge and the courtroom, the availability, it's not going to be until after the holidays and in February that that's going to happen. On the issue of whether to release the documents, the judge heard from both uh, Richard uh, Allen's attorneys as well as from the prosecutor. She heard the evidence. She, she got some evidence uh, and heard their testimony and why they think that it either should or should not be released, the probable cause affidavit. She's taking that under advisement, and she said she will rule on that. Uh, we believe nothing is going to come out uh, on that today whether it's tomorrow, whether it's after Thanksgiving, we're not sure, but we expect it to be within the next 10 days. We're used to the wheels of justice turning slowly. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to check back with you in a sure. little bit about what happens next, but I do want to bring in, we're just going to yeah. hand over the mic here situation like this. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sam Johnson, another one of our uh, reporters that was in the courtroom along with Karen Campbell, who's here uh, going to be recording as well. Uh, Tell me some of the statements that you found from the prosecutor and from the defense attorneys that you felt were most meaningful. Yeah, as Bob mentioned, there were a couple key takeaways, obviously one of them being the fact that the prosecutor didn't believe that Richard Allen wasn't the only one in this case. So that's one of the main takeaways. Something else to point out, too, he presented the judge four pieces of what he considered to be key evidence in this fight to keep these documents sealed. And one of them, the third aspect of this that he submitted was actually a written letter from Becky Patty. And of course, that's the grandmother of Libby German. That letter was asking the judge and the court to keep those documents sealed. The other thing that the prosecutor submitted today was a, a petition, and it had more than 40,000 signatures on it from community members who agreed that the documents should be sealed. And one other quote that caught my attention from the prosecutor, a lot of people have been saying, you know, well, it's in the public's interest to release those documents, to unseal them so we know what actually happened. The prosecutor said that is the public interest finding justice for Libby and Abby. He said, and if we release those documents, it could justify, it could interfere, so to speak, with that investigation at this point. So that was his argument. On the flip side, a few of the key takeaways from the defense attorney, they were saying, you know, a lot of this, when you look at similar cases, past cases, this is a unique case nonetheless, but he said it's at this point causing a practical problem is what he called it. Because at this point, we're creating more question and more stir about what actually happened 
rather than just putting the facts of the case out there. So that was one of his key arguments, of course, on behalf of Richard Allen. And, and their indication was that they do not have a strong case against Richard Allen. That's exactly right. And we actually got the chance to talk to both defense attorneys afterwards. And we asked them, we said, what is it in the documents that you've been able to read that points to your client? And he kind of gave us this shrug and he said, you can answer that question when you read it for yourself too, because as they're concerned, there is not that direct evidence there. So uh, certainly from both sides, an important day. And as Bob mentioned too, we're gonna wait to hear that announcement from the judge, depending on which way she, she makes that order. Yeah, uh, Karen Cam, I'd love you to come in and, and join our conversation here. Uh, your observations about the, the mood in the courtroom today, and I know you were kind of keeping an eye on the family and, and the whole scene there. I mean, this is big goings on anywhere, especially oh, yeah. in small town Indiana. Yeah, so the mood, it was an interesting mood, right? Because security, first of all, was extremely tight. There were uh, police officers, sheriff deputies, not just outside the courtroom, on all three levels of the courtroom, outside, inside the courtroom. Uh, the judge had requested everyone be silent. She wanted all attention uh, to be focused on what's happening in the courtroom. Now, the families of Libby and Abby, they were seated, you know, like Bob said, in the second row. Mm -hmm. uh, when the suspect, Richard Allen, walked into the room, uh, he didn't make any contact uh, with any members of the family, any members of the audience. Uh, so when you talk about the mood inside that courtroom, uh, I mean, you could, you could almost hear a pin drop, but everyone was so focused on what this judge was going to determine. Uh, of course, you heard Bob say, we're going to have to wait for that decision. Uh, but everyone was just so focused. Yeah. Everyone was so focused in that courtroom. So that was in the courtroom. What happened afterwards? Did the family speak out? Did they have any reaction or did they decline at this time? Well, uh, we tried to wait for the family mm -hmm. to come down to the first floor. Uh, Becky Patty uh, mm -hmm. walked past the cameras and uh, Samantha Johnson had, had asked uh, uh, Becky, uh, you know, about why you wanted to keep the documents sealed. Um, we didn't get much, mm -hmm. you know, from the family. We didn't even see the family leave. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they didn't want to be interviewed today. Perhaps yeah. they wanted, uh, you know, their, their time of peace. So. Yeah. So much build up to this time. Thanks so much, uh, Karen, for your perspective. We're going to bring in Bob for, you know, what happens next. And uh, I know you've been following uh, some of the, the legal aspects of this case uh, closely. And uh, when we're talking about these documents coming out, um, really, arguments on both sides. Everybody wants justice. They just have a differing opinion of that's the best way to get there, it seems. Absolutely. And and that was uh, really one of the more interesting parts of today's hearing. You heard the prosecutor. He argued the fact that in order to protect witnesses, some of which uh, are juveniles in the case, in order to pre uh, prevent chaos in the courtroom and things of that sort, and, and really to protect the ongoing investigation that the records need to remain sealed. On the other hand, you have the defense saying the fact that we had a very orderly court hearing today is evidence that there does not need to be chaos in this case. And I thought that they made a compelling uh, argument about the fact that there's so much interest in this case and much of that interest is just growing at this point because of secrecy and the fact that the probable cause affidavit, which would uh, theoretically explain why police believe Richard Allen is linked to the murders, that's been sealed, that's secret. And their argument is the longer that that's the case, the more uh, likelihood that there could be chaos and even more heightened interest. So the judge is going to be weighing really the, uh, the transparency, versus uh, the ability of the prosecutor to, to conduct uh, you know, his case. And it's, it's gonna come down to whether the judge feels that the public interest outweighs um, the, the prosecutor's argument for why these documents should remain sealed. So she has several days to make her decision whether or not it comes before Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. At this point, uh, we don't know the answer to that, but um, Certainly a possibility will be that she will order the probable cause affidavit to be released with redactions. And in court today, um, we heard that the prosecutor offered up uh, a copy of the probable cause affidavit with witness names redacted. And he asked the judge, if you are going to release the document, 
please do so with the witness information redacted there. So that seems like it could be a likely scenario that within the next few days, we will get the probable cause affidavit just with some information redacted. Yeah, and uh, you spoke with uh, former prosecutor Jack Crawford yesterday, yeah. and certainly it was his prediction based on his uh, long career and experience that that's exactly what's gonna happen. It is going to be released. I mean, that was his argument. Um, yes. as, the, as a prosecutor, when the prosecutor here is, doesn't want it released. Exactly. Interesting. It, it is, and you know, another interesting point that was made by the defense here is that all along in this case, investigators have been relying on the public to give tips and to weigh in with information to help them solve this crime. And the defense said it's, uh, it's ironic and uh, you know, perhaps somewhat backward at this point that now that we're at this point in the case, all of a sudden Shut the you, public out. you, you want to keep that information uh, from the public uh, a secret. And they mm -hmm. say if in fact there is someone else who might be responsible, um, you would, if you release information to the public, that gives them even more information to be able to, to weigh in on. So yeah. uh, it, it is interesting. There, there are compelling arguments on each side. It'll be up to the judge to kind of weigh through all that and, and to decide which best serves the public interest when it comes to uh, justice in this case. Yeah, and, and finds the person who's responsible for taking those two young girls, Abby Williams and Libby German, from their community. I mean, five yeah. years ago, uh, in their teens, in eighth grade, and uh, certainly the search for justice is continuing on. I do want to just ask, you know, I have not seen Richard Allen in person. I've seen these pictures of this man along this trail. I've seen sketches. Uh, you saw him in person today. What What was your observation of him? I mean, uh, he, certainly he was very quiet. He uh, did not show uh, much expression on his face, mm -hmm. uh, surrounded by security, uh, wearing flak jackets, uh, heavily armed, um, and, uh, you know, uh, individual, uh, not very tall, uh, slight stature, mm -hmm. walking, and uh, I could hear he was coming into the, into the courtroom because the first thing you hear is uh, the chains, um, both uh, his feet uh, and his wrists bound in chains. So. Um, to see him in person, he, he did not show a lot of emotion in court today, um, and, and we might not expect that. It was a, it was a procedural hearing today mm -hmm. uh, about the release of records, but it was our first opportunity uh, to see him. And again, it's worth pointing out, uh, his attorneys say police got the wrong guy. Uh, they, they insist that uh, uh, Richard Allen is innocent, and they say that they believe that when and if uh, the probable cause affidavit is released. They say what's in there is flimsy and that the, the evidence that is contained in that probable cause affidavit uh, is not robust, not as robust as they would think that you normally see in a, in a document that explains why someone is responsible for a heinous crime. Yeah. And, and, and the, the person who said that he did not act alone is attributed to whom today? When you said the biggest news that came out today, that was attributed to? Uh, that was Nicholas McClelland. He is the prosecutor for Carroll County. And uh, again, he, he said in court today, we do not believe that Richard Allen was uh, the only actor involved in this. So um, that's, that's compelling news to come out of today's court hearing. Again, there's so much more information to be known about this case. It's in sealed documents right now whether or not it serves justice uh, to be able to, to release those documents for the public to be able to really see what police know at that point. Uh, at this point, that's what is being decided. That's what we expect to hear from the judge in the next couple of days if she's going to release those documents. Yeah. All right. Uh, good job. Thanks so much, yep. Bob. And so that's the latest here from Delphi and Carroll County today where there was this court hearing for Richard Allen. We do not have a ruling from the judge yet on the probable cause affidavit. Uh, the decision about whether or not there will be bail established for him. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, at first it was set for $20 million and then it was, that was quickly uh, taken down and then it was like no bail. So in the, the defense argument in this case is that after looking at the probable cause affidavit, their argument is that there is not a strong case against Richard Allen and that there should be bail. A decision and a ruling on that request is now as it stands on the court docket for February.